Question comes from Tony. He says, will we see more production out of our offensive line and Jay Cutler? Can Matt Moore do a better job? Uh, so starting with the offensive line question, I think you've already seen them. Um, I think they had their best performance, pro well, their second best performance of the season uh, on Sunday. Uh, you know, they really dropped off their play ever since the Chargers game. I think this is a step in the right direction, though. This Titans game, they were not going up against an easy front at all. Not only do the Titans have good, um, <clears throat> a good front, a good defensive line, they also have a really good, uh, they have some good linebackers as well. They have Wesley Woodyard, who's been a very good linebacker for a long time. He made some plays on Sunday, but they have a really good front seven. So for them to go out there and do some of the things that they did, you know, Jay got 25 touches for 77 yards. That's not a, that's not good by any stretch of the imagination. Touching the ball that many times and only getting you know 77 yards. You you know the opposing defense is obviously doing its job, but um, I think it was better than previous uh, previous the, the past two weeks, which is a good thing. And you can't say that a lot about the offense in terms of stepping in the right direction. So at least that was a step in the right direction. Um, at least we saw improvement because the last. Uh, two weeks really we haven't seen any improvement on any in any facet on the offense you know the blocking has been atrocious the receivers haven't you know got the ball at all in space at all we haven't been able to see that you know the quarterback play has been poor so nothing has really improved since the Jets game so at least that was improved on Sunday you know there were more running lanes especially in that second half um so for JJ to, to to run through, so that was a good thing. You know, I, I think a lot of it had to do Anthony Fasano's snap percentage went way up in that game. Julius Thomas got way less snaps. Julius was only on the field in obvious passing situations. Um, you know, we took a lot more shots downfield, which was a good thing from a play calling standpoint. You know, the play action game was more uh, active. You saw Fasano go go on more routes, which is a good thing because we've been you know cra you know we've been asking for different personnel and at least that happened on Sunday we got a little bit different personnel Adam Gase did make a lineup change when you go back and look at that game Anthony Fasano got most of the snaps at tight end and I think that really helped in the run blocking especially in shotgun handoffs inside zones when you need a tight end to pull and block Anthony Fasano is probably the best at that in the NFL so um, I think that really helped us in the run blocking as well um, that defense, especially on their front, like I said, is very talented. They have two pro bowlers, one on the inside, Drill Casey, who's one of the best in the business, and then you have Brian Rackbo. So that was no easy task. It wasn't like they were going up against a bad front at all, by any stretch of the imagination. So um, they did a good job. And I, like I said, I think it, a lot of it had to do with Anthony getting way more snaps than the previous games, which hopefully that continues because the reason we signed him is to be a run blocker. Last year in Pro Football Focus rankings, he ranked the, as the number one run blocking tight end in the NFL. So um, he needs to get more snaps doing that. And, you know, an underrated part of the offense are the tight ends blocking because they're in constantly. I don't think there's a set in an Adam Gase offense in a formationally that there's not a tight end in there. So uh, and most of, you know, most of uh, our offensive plays, it's at least on first and second down, are running plays. So Julius Thomas was taking those snaps. He was not doing a good job blocking, which led to people getting in the backfield. Now that Anthony Fasano is going to be that guy, um, then he's going to be a better run blocker. There's going to be more open open holes there. And I like Julius Thomas's snap count being driven back a little bit. Makes him stay fresh for you know passing plays. And you saw that be effective on Sunday on that huge third down that really set us up first and goal where Julius Thomas made a play. So I think you're seeing the offense in terms of personnel in the running game really find our lineup for the rest of the year which is a good thing and that, that that was a good thing that we saw on Sunday at least that was a step in the right direction and the second part to the question is should we start Matt Moore um no uh you know I said this before and I'll say it again play well in um preseason but he didn't play well in, in training camp when Tannehill went down and he took over the first team snaps I mean in the scrimmage he threw two interceptions and he threw one of them was a pick six so Matt or maybe it was only one I'm pretty sure it was two picks though and one of them was a pick six um he also threw two touchdowns but you know in preseason he did not play well at all I mean David Fells was thoroughly outplaying him and there were obviously chat there was obviously chatter of whether we should keep, keep his salary on the books for another year or just go ahead and cut him right now um for the foreseeable future and then you know that's going to be a huge question mark going into this next offseason is what what do we do with Matt Moore 
um, because he did not play well in preseason. You know, he couldn't move the ball on twos and threes, um, and that was a big red flag. Uh, so I, I don't think the Dolphins should start, should start Matt Moore. I know he has an over 500 record as a starting quarterback in this league. I know when he comes in, in terms of his Dolphins career, he does nothing but good things, um, except his last two games last year. Uh, but I don't think he played well enough to start. Um, and be the starting quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. He didn't play well enough in preseason. He was getting outplayed by a fourth fourth to third string quarterback who's no longer on this roster because we couldn't keep him on the practice squad. But he was getting outplayed by David Fales. So, no, I don't think he should start um, at all. This question comes from Brandon. He says, Charles Harris showed his stuff yesterday. Can he be Cameron Wake's replacement? Um, yes. I think eventually, you know, I want to keep these two together as, as long as we possibly can because I think this defensive line is very, very special. It has a lot of talent on it, um, and it has a lot of versatility on it. And, you know, one of the best things about this defensive line is it's built for the future. Um, when you think about all the young players on it, when you think about Charles Harris, Savon Godshaw, Vincent Taylor, and how well they're playing, um, and they're really... Um, you know, their teachers are really teaching them well when you talk about Cameron Wake and Sue and uh, William Hayes and what they've passed down to these young rookies and how they've played on Sundays. It's, it's just awesome to watch. Um, and, you know, when you look at what Charles Harris did on Sunday, it was just so fun to watch. When you see your, your first-round pick perform the way he did and really just dominate a game. I mean, he really dominated the game. When you talk about how disruptive he was on defense, not only rushing the passer, but dropping back in coverage and deflecting footballs, getting away, getting in the way of passing lanes and stuff of that nature. Um, it was really fun. And the way Matt Burke utilizes Charles Harris is, is, is really cool um, and really creative. So um, I think Charles actually got one more snap than Cameron Wake did on Sunday because of the dominance he was playing with. So cool. You know, the way Charles Harris, there's so many ways Charles Harris can, can affect a game because he is not a starter. Um, obviously, he comes in on obvious passing downs uh, to be a pass rusher, um, and he drops back in coverage, and he can do, you know, he does so many different things. Um, once he figures out how to be a, a run defender, once he figures out how to set the edge in the NFL, um, then I think he's going to be a very special player for a very long time. Um, and he's going to be, he's f from here on out, I mean, there, there, there are no, like, his pass rush ability is as clean as it can get. Um, he is a pure pass rushing defensive end, and he's going to be immaculate at that for the rest of his career. Um, and you saw that on Sunday. And like I said, he can disrupt a game in more than one way because of his athleticism. He didn't run the fastest 40 time, but his game speed is super, super fast. When you see him play, it, it's just, it, he's, he's super athletic, super smart player. And like I said, he can affect the game in many different ways. But he's going to be a dominant pass rusher for his entire career. I would expect Charles Harris to get to the quarterback a whole lot more for the rest of the season, um, and that is definitely something not, that he doesn't have to work on. Like I said, all he's got to do is figure out uh, how to set the edge in the NFL, and as soon as he does that, he'll be a three-down guy, um, and he'll be a pro bowler for many years to come. He might be a pro bowler just on the fact that he, he's such a dominant, he's going to be such a dominant pass rusher, which is the thing you want out of a defensive end in today's NFL because of how, you know, I, it's so, like, passing, it's, it's passing. Running backs are turning into makeshift receivers. I mean, tight ends aren't blocking anymore. They're obviously just an extra receiver on the football field. So most of NFL offense is passing more than they run it now. Um, and Charles Harris is going to really, really enjoy his career in today's NFL because of his ability to rush the passer. But I think as long as we can keep these two together on the same football team, um, the better, because I think they both play off of each other's strength so well, um, and it adds a lot of versatility and depth to the defensive line, um, and a lot of headaches for opposing defenses, because you can do different things. You know, one of the things I thought that was super cool is when you look at what Ron, Mel uh, Ron Melinari, I can't ever say his name, or the Cowboys defensive line coach, I can never say his name right, but what he does with his defensive line is kind of similar to what Matt Burke is doing. He's very creative of how he uses his pass rushers, especially on third down. He'll move people inside. He'll drop him back in coverage. So I love the way that, like, wh how many options he gets because of the versatility on the defensive line. So as long as we can keep these two together, the better. Uh, but eventually when Cameron Wake retires, Charles Harris is going to be a very, very good replacement. This question comes from the gamer one two three four five. He says, "I see Baker Mayfield is a project is projected to be a second round pick. If he fell to the Dolphins in the second round, would you take him?" You know, the thing I love about Baker Mayfield is he's so he's such a 
smart football player in terms of his football instincts are off the charts. I mean, he can make something out of nothing. Um, the question marks that I have in the NFL, for him going to the NFL is he's not a big quarterback. Um, although he's not a big quarterback, he does show a lot of poise in the pocket, which is what you want to see out of a smaller quarterback. But there are there have been similar quarterbacks like him to come out. Russell Wilson is a very similar quarterback to Baker Mayfield. Johnny Manziel is a very similar quarterback to Baker Mayfield. Those are two opposite sides of the spectrum from what you want from a smaller you know quarterback who can make it work on the next level. And then the other side of it is a quarterback that just can't do it. Now, the reason Johnny Manziel failed was it because of physical gifts. It was because of his mental ability obviously he just could not he could his dedication to the game was not very good so you don't want to get a baker mayfield in the nfl and him turn out to be something like that um there have been two so many cases where the smaller you know quicker quarterbacks that they just struggle on the next level now is baker mayfield drew Brees or is he johnny manzel i think he's more along the lines of a drew Brees and a russell wilson i you know i don't there's no character issues when you look at baker mayfield which is a great thing um, you know, I think, you know, he's, he reminds me a little bit of, uh, he, he reminds me a lot of Doug Flutie in a way. Um, he plays very similar to him, um, in that, in that way. I wouldn't mind taking, mind taking him in the second round. I think I just have, there's a lot of question marks, um, if he can overcome his size on the next level, which is, you know, it sounds sim like it sounds ridiculous in a way, but it, it's true. There've been many quarterbacks, uh, of Baker Mayfield's type that have just can't translate to the NFL, so we'll see. Um, and it, obviously, in rare cases, it's more often than not. It does more often than not. It doesn't work, but in rare cases, you do get a Drew Brees, you do get a Russell Wilson. Um, and Baker Mayfield is a very, very good college quarterback. Obviously, he's he's in the race for the Heisman, but uh, we'll see. I wouldn't mind taking him in the second round. There are other quarterbacks that I like a lot that are coming out. Um, uh, in this this upcoming draft, but you can get a, a quality franchise quarterback in this upcoming draft in the later rounds. You don't have to select one with the first round pick, which is I think what the Dolphins need to do: either take one in the second or third round. Do you know how many great quarterbacks have been selected in the second? You don't have to take one in the first. You can get a Derek Carr in the second round. You can get a Russell Wilson in the third round. You can get a Tom Brady in the sixth round. So it's not impossible, but. You know, Baker Mayfield is 100% an option. I'm, to I'm not uh, totally against it because the question marks against Baker Mayfield, you can we can only answer when he's in the NFL. It just can his game translate to the on the, to the next level. You know, another comparison that people compare him to, although Tony Romo, to excuse me, Tony Romo is a whole lot you know bigger than uh, Baker Mayfield is is Tony Romo. He does play a lot like Tony Romo. Um, he improvises a lot. He's got he can throw off of any platform you would want him to. He's just a little bit shorter. Again, the only question mark I have with Baker Mayfield is not accuracy. It's not touch with the football. It's not instincts. It's not pocket presence. It's not poise. Is can he play on the next level at that size? That's the only question mark I have for Baker Mayfield. This question comes from No. This is Patrick. He says, "Why is Jay Cutler playing so bad?" Um, and obviously, I think all Dolphins fans have, at this point are, are, are just kind of sick and tired of the offensive performance as a whole, not just, at, at, you know, everybody looks to the quarterback when things aren't working on the offensive side of the football, they point fingers at him, he gets the blame uh, for it, when things are going wrong, the quarterback gets all the blame, when things are going right, he gets all of the accolades, as they say, so it, it is what it is, it comes with playing the position, but, uh, you know, I... I there, I don't think there's one reason that he's playing so bad. I think the offense as a whole it just is not working well as a unit. Um, they're not having fun out there. I think the passion has been taken out of it for them. Um, I think it, for them it seems more like a. It just they're they're so not they're they're not playing with any confidence and they're pressing so much to to move the football. And when mentally when you're facing like a third and a ten and third and five, when you don't believe you're gonna get it. Um, ten, things tend to not go your way, and right now the Dolphins are just not playing with any confidence on the offensive side of the football. When you look at the defensive side of the football and how much confidence and how much fun they are having um, because of how much success they're having, it's a totally different mentality. Um, so the offense, I think, just needs to get its confidence back. You know, one of the things that I was excited to see when Jay Cutler was signed here is his playmaking ability um and we got a lot of that in the first game of the season think about some of the plays he made in that chargers game um a lot of people forget about the when he rolled out and he found Devonte parker on an insanely good throw um and deep into the middle of the football field um to Devontae Parker, and then he made that insanely good throw to Jarvis Andrew for a 30-yard touchdown in the end zone on when Kenny was matched up with a uh, 
with the linebacker. Um, and then obviously the Devontae Parker 50-50 ball uh, over Casey Hayward. So we haven't seen any of those things. We haven't seen the back shoulder fades that we saw in the preseason. And some of those plays that we know Jay Cutler can throw, we just haven't seen those yet. Now, whether it's been rust, whether it's been he needs to get accum- acclimated to his new teammates, um, I don't know what it is. I don't. You can't. I mean, to be honest with you, I can't really put a finger on one thing. Um, you know, the blocking hasn't been great, but there have been plays where he's gotten time to survey the field and he's made bad decisions with the football. A perfect example of that was against the Titans when he had a plenty of time to find an open receiver, but he dunked his head down. He kept his eyes. He didn't keep his eyes downfield, which is a, one of the biggest rookie mistakes you could possibly do. He, had, he was ta- he was having no pressure at all. He could have kept his eyes downfield. That is when people talk about poise in the pocket. Poise is when you stand in the pocket right before you're about to get hit and you let a ball go. Who had who had that more than anybody? And that's Tannehill. How many times have you seen Tannehill take a shot right after he just lets a ball go? Um, and Jay Cutler failed to do that on that particular play. He did not keep his eyes downfield um, at all. He showed zero poise in the pocket. So he's making mistakes he usually doesn't make. Not playing with, with, with a ton of confidence at all. I, I think what it's going to take for him to get back on track is this offensive this offense uh you know to, to really get going in terms of a big play i think you know adam needs to be more aggressive earlier on in the game um you know I, it sounds crazy uh but it's very similar to what the seahawks are experiencing right now you know once they go to that no huddle offense once they you know are pressing to make a big play and you know trying to move the football down the field when the game is obviously either out of reach or they're coming from behind they play better on offense and it's very similar to what we've seen with this our offense as well when we when we're more aggressive when we open it up a little bit more um and let jay cutler you know have five receivers um and let him dance around in the pocket and find uh, a target we seem to be more successful um in the passing game so i hope adam you know, does that more. I hope we're just a little bit more aggressive. I hope we go empty a little bit more. And I think you'll see some flow, and I think you'll see some rhythm with this offense that we haven't seen the entire season get going earlier on in games, and you'll see more success as the game goes along. In the Titans game, that's a perfect example of an offense that never got in a rhythm in the first half at all. They just didn't get in any flow. So when are you going to hit the... If you hit the... when Whatever you hit your flow... Is it either going to be in the third quarter or the fourth quarter when it's too late? When the game's all either out of hand or it's just, you know, it's too late to get into that flow of rhythm, um, you know, that late in the game, you don't want your offense to do that. So we'll see. I think, it, again, I think it's going to take a fast start for this offense to get off on track, but it only takes one game for this offense to explode. Um, I really, truly do believe that. I think once they do have that game, they're going to get on the right track, and I think you'll see Jay Cutler's imp- game in, in, uh, um, improve. But like I said, my point is, is it's not all on Jay Cutler. You know, the offense isn't playing bad just because of Jay Cutler, just because Jay Cutler is the starting quarterback. There are other factors you have to factor in. The offensive line play has not been the greatest over the last four games. Um, and, you know, that that's... I think that's a big part of it, and, and we haven't been winning the, the battle in first and second down. When you average third and ten plus, it's hard for a quarterback to consistently convert those. No quarterback in the NFL can do that. Um, so, you know, I think those are some of the things that are plaguing this offense. But I think if we get off to again a faster start, excuse me, a faster start, we were a little bit more aggressive in the past game. We open it up a little bit more for Jay Cutler. I think good things will come. This question comes from Ronald. He says, Tankersley is a legit shutdown corner. Only one catch for seven yards on him. He was slamming the line of scrimmage in the, the run game. Sometimes got there faster than Maluga. Do you agree? Yes, I think Tankersley is playing amazing football right now. I think he's been an absolute godsend. I think you really have to give a lot of credit to this Dolphins front office for what they did in that draft. I mean, Chris Greer did a fantastic job of scouting talent, especially in the later rounds, and finding hidden gems. Um, and he really, I mean, it just did a tremendous job. I mean, when you think about what Devon Gotcha has brought to the table, when you think about what Vincent Taylor has brought to the table, and now that you look at Quadre Tankersley, um, who was a third-round pick, and he's playing the, the way that he's playing. I mean, his first game was against one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever live, and he played a, a tremendous football game, and they were targeting him a lot. 
Um, and then when he, he follows that up with a, another really, really nice performance against the Tennessee Titans, I mean, Cordrea Tankersley is, is just absolutely balling out. Um, you know, he's not getting any recognition. I think as the game, I think as the year goes along, he's going to get more, you know, national media attention in terms of when you see rookie rankings because he deserves to be in those rankings as of right now. And a lot, some of all the other Dolphins on this defense deserve to be as well because they are contributing and affecting games every Sunday um, and winning games for their football team. So, um, yeah, Cordrea Tankersley is playing amazing. And, you know, the thing you bring about, the thing that you bring up about um, the run game is the most interesting part because when you think about the biggest gripe people had with Cordrea, there were two things. One was, could he play, could his game translate to the next level because of how physical he is? Can he get his hands off receivers down the field and play and still play at a high level? The second thing was, is can he be, can he be a force in the running game? Um, and that was obviously a big question mark going into the year because obviously teams like to run it on our defense and obviously they're not going to do that anymore because of how good the front's playing and, you know, how talented they are. But uh, he's, he's answered both of those questions so far. He's, his technique is flawless at this point. Um, he hasn't been called for one pass interference or illegal use of the hands or any any kind of stupid penalty, uh, not one time through the first two games of his career. Um, and he's been playing very, very good in the running game. So Cordrea Tankersley is having a tremendous season that I don't think anybody could really have predicted. Um, and he should have started earlier, in my opinion. I mean, I think after the preseason the man had, I think all Dolphins fans were wondering why he wasn't at least activated to the roster because he's better than Altron Werner. I mean, I, I mean that's one of the biggest. It was one of the d- more dumb things that we did early on, earlier on in the season, is not have him playing, um, either on special teams or to add depth at the cornerback position. But yeah, he's playing at a very, very high level right now, um, and he needs to get more recognition because he is playing at a very, very high level. I think when you look at all the rookie corners um, through their first two games of the season, if you compare that to Marshawn Lattimore or uh, Tre'Davious White, he's had and he's the third round pick. He's had the best first two games out of any of them so he needs to get more recognition uh, from the from the net i don't care if he does or not i mean we know how good he is but he's playing at a very high level right now so that is gonna be it guys that has been this the fan kune for this week i am skags to 3 um you know i think some of the things that uh i think most of these things that we've talked about hopefully are going to get fixed especially with the offense um I think I think they will. I, I you know I think yeah, like I said I think it takes one big game for them, and I think they're gonna get on, get on a roll and they get their confidence back. So I'm Skagster1083, and I will see you guys in the next one.